You ever wondered what's inside of a CNC machine? And maybe you didn't see the last episode that we did on this one. <laughs> well, today we're going to talk about pickle forks. Do you have a pickle fork? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a pickle fork either. And uh, I, I don't know what it's actually called, but there is a tool that I am currently missing to uninstall and reinstall these uh, spindles. This is a BT30. Hey, it says it right on there, right there. I don't know if you can see that. This is a BT30 tool changing holder thing, a spindle, I guess they're called. I'm still learning the terminology of this machine, uh, but this is what all the tools go into. And then there is the, uh, the 26 tool changer in here that you can see. Uh, so this is part of what I'm working on is uh, getting all of this set up. Uh, I believe the old owner of this machine, they're going to send me one of these forks for installation. Uh, in the manual, it shows the, the, the fork being used. You, you basically like you shove it in the side and you lever it one way or the other to install or uninstall the tool. And uh, it's got no part number. It's got absolutely no name to it. I, I can't figure out. My Google Foo is not working out well enough to figure out what like or where to buy. So they're just going to send me one because they've got extras, I reckon. Uh, so these are the spindles. This is called the pull stud. This is actually a separate piece of the spindle and the pull stud um, can either be through coolant or not through coolant. It looks like this is not through coolant. So the machine doesn't have one installed. And then we've got on this top side. So, so this is one solid section. Then we have our uh, nut, I think it's called, and then the collet that slips into the nut. And so you can see there's a tapered fit. This is a uh, ER 16 collet style these collets slip in and out like yay you can see like that and then you got to install them into the nut like that there we go and then we would torque it down and then the collet clamps down and this is a three to four millimeter collet which is going to work perfect for the eighth inch shank tools i've got a lot of eighth inch stuff a lot of taps and stuff like that uh, they're all eighth inch there and uh, yeah so i'm gonna have to get some more of these there's a few that the old machine owner supplied which was rad and uh tooling this thing up is going to be really expensive even though i already had a lot of stuff i'm adding it up and yeah this ain't gonna be a cheap project unfortunately uh speaking of uh expenses the next thing that i need to do is of course inject g-code into this machine uh, i could do the conversational in it and for some small parts here and there yeah sure that's going to be fine however we got to use uh this this parallel maybe not this parallel cable but there's a parallel port on the front of the machine and that is how you inject code from an external device uh, but it also turns out that this is an old enough machine that it doesn't, it, it is not compatible with normal serial interface. So, uh, I, I, I did get, but I have not run this brother com or bro com as it's called. It's, it's a great name. Uh, you got to run this bro com software and it talks to the serial port on your computer. Assuming you have one, we talked about this last time. And then that communicates with this actual machine. Now I could get an updated control board for this machine. They, uh, I did get a quote back from Yamazen and it's like 2,500 bucks for it, uh, which is honestly not that bad for a control board for a CNC machine. However, if I can get by without making that expenditure right now, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, honestly, there's really no features, uh, if, especially if I can just use that brother com. There's really no reason for me to upgrade it right now because it's not like I got a whole fleet of these things and I'm not trying to like use the same computer to talk to all of them and inject the code into it. Uh, so the next thing that I've got to do is uh, probably get this old computer set up. Uh, it's actually got a parallel port built into the motherboard. It is that old of a machine you can see right there. Bam, look, printer port right there. Uh, so we are going to use that guy actually to at least inject into this. I don't think I'm going to hook it up to it all the time because I also run other CNC machines with this. Uh, but for, for here and there until I figure out another computer or if I can figure out a USB to serial device, this is pretty much what I'm going to do or find like a really old Dell laying around or whatever. Not, uh, not, not this one that somebody said, Hey, you selling, you selling the Dell. This, this thing is so old. Uh, it came from rcshortcourse.com actually. They, they sold it to me. So, uh, yeah, this does not have a, uh, a parallel port on it. I think I keep calling it serial port. 
So it communicates via serial, but it's over a parallel port, I'm pretty sure is what it is. But uh, all right, back, back on topic. Pull studs, spindles, G-code, post processor. That is also what I'm working on. So there's a lot of like different things doing at the same time. We got the Brocom. I've got a computer with a parallel port. We've got a cable or another cable that I can hack together or whatever, not a big deal on that. Uh, but what I need to do now is output a G code that's gonna work with this machine. And we can use a modified Fanuc post processor, or I actually found one that is, uh, uh, what's the company? It's it, usable for Fusion 360, but also for the HSM works that I have integrated into my SolidWorks. So now I don't have to use Fusion. I hate Fusion. It's a cloud-based software. I don't want my computer hooked up to the internet for this guy, to tell you the truth. The computer we just showed you right there, that's like a 2005 build, 2007 build, it still runs. It hasn't had internet on it for almost the entire time that it's been running. And guess what? It still runs just fine. And the last thing that I want is for me to be dependent on Fusion that, oh, hey, if their servers go down, I can't machine anything. Or, hey, they decided they're gonna throw an update to it that made it where it's just not stable anymore. Or, hey, you're connected to the internet, so now everything is pushing updates on your computer all at once, and either it becomes unstable or it literally runs out of memory to operate. How many times have you had an old computer do that, where you hooked it up after you know sitting idle for three or four years or whatever, you hook it up, it just has this huge cascade of updates and it pretty much bricks your computer. I don't want that. I also don't like Fusion 360 because it's a subscription-based cloud service, and I refuse to do that. Also, if you do any aerospace stuff, you can't use cloud-based services like that. So, you know, for what it is, if I ever get back into that, I will be much safer using SolidWorks with their HSM Express or whatever plugin that I've already got. So, long story a little shorter, I'm working with the post processor, post processor right now. I need to figure out how to get it to do CAN cycles. Right now it's not doing CAN cycles, which is like if you're going to do a tap, it's a G77. Uh, so it will put your spindle down this way and then pull your spindle back up. Right now it's just using it like a drill for some reason in code. So I got a little bit more work to do with that, but we did find that A00 processor, post processor that I can use with my software, which was awesome. That was like the biggest hurdle. If you can't output G code into this machine, it's gonna be really tough to do anything that's complicated. I could totally hand program some G code in it, but that's not what I wanna do. I'd really like to be able to just draw something in 3D within a few minutes, output my G code into it within a few minutes, and then be ready to machine with all of these lovely tools that I'm gonna have an option of. There's really not much that I won't be able to do. I won't have to switch out my tools, which is really cool. That's honestly the biggest draw for this machine is that it's a multi-tool, it's a tool changer, which also Fusion 360 post processors, unless you buy the really expensive one, you can't do multiple tool changes. And if you're not aware, even if you have their normal license, they're gonna take away five axis machining. Uh, let's say you just bought a three-year license for it uh, for Fusion 360 because you're using a five axis or a four axis. Well, they just said, no, sorry, come in August or whenever it is. You're not going to have that even though you prepaid for your three-year license. We're going to actually take away those features from your license. So good luck on you if you're using Fusion 360. It's going to be like an extra 1600 bucks a year to keep your, your five axis use on it, which for big machine shops, that's not a big deal. But for a lot of these small machine shops that are like single guys like me, that's a pretty freaking big deal to just like rug pull you after you've already bought what you thought you were going to have for three years. So I, uh, I guess this turned into a rant against <laughs> Fusion. <laughs> that's not what I intended to do. Just telling you where the updates are and what I've been running into for problems on this, you know, getting this machine running. It's been a really fun learning experience though. I am getting my feet uh, deep enough into post processors. I'm gonna figure that out. We're gonna get a computer hooked up and hopefully within about two weeks or so, uh, I've, I've got some parts that I actually do need to make. Hopefully I'll be producing parts and not crashing the machine. So I'm gonna be really, really careful about stuff and uh, go one step at a time and read these big old manuals. We got uh, five of these manuals to read on how to operate this machine. And I've, I've been reading them all. Um, it's pretty dry, if I'm going to be honest with you. But, you know, it is what it is. This is what is required when you want to operate a new CNC machine and it's kind of old and you can't just, like, spend money to hire somebody to come give you a crash course on it. Which I, I guess I could do that, but I'm, I'm wanting to do this the hard way, which is learning myself instead of spending the money. Sometimes it's easier to spend the money and sometimes 
it's well it's always easier to spend the money but i just kind of don't want to i'd rather spend that on tools right now i'm being cheap and that is requiring me to learn stuff which i'll close with this learning in itself is a skill and if you let yourself get too far out from learning stuff all the time then it becomes much harder to learn new stuff so i feel like me doing this the hard way is just keeping myself sharp because you know i i, I could have just gone the easy way and paid for a bunch of updated stuff paid for the control board and just just got it done right but i wanted to learn and i really wanted to see if i could figure this out because it feels like here lately i just haven't been learning enough i don't know maybe, maybe you feel that way too let me know in the comments if you ever feel like you're just kind of getting stagnant in life and that you need to learn something new but you don't know what well this was the don't know what for me this is my uh you know i turned 40 sort of surprise for myself and i'm i'm learning i'm gonna get this figured out it may take a couple weeks it may take a couple of months it may take me half a year to figure this out but the, the this machine's not going anywhere now we got to pull down two walls to get it out of here uh well i mean maybe we can do the easy way and get out in this direction but no no we'd have to take a, another wall out over there because the the door heights are too low so uh yeah yeah it's not going anywhere i got plenty of time i got nothing but time to learn it so Try to stay sharp, learn some new stuff. Let me know in the comments if there's something that you're learning new right now. And thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great day.